My own physical process with Gogan is actually stable and predictable. Um, if I'm standing in front of one of his great masterpieces, the first thing I feel is a feeling of being physically sick that's ubiquitous, bordering without quite getting to nausea. And then that stops, and then I feel not anything like transcendence or elevation, that would be too much like Matisse, but I feel emotional release that goes up to the point of, but just stops short of tears. I think what's important to get with ethically questionable works of art is that it's not a big deal if what's ethically questionable are minor details or the weaker parts of the work, things that can be abstracted away. It's only ever worth talking about if what's questionable are the work's strengths. So we're not talking about the weakest part of a work, we're talking about the work's suspect strengths. And so I want to take a look at two paintings. One, a painting called Nevermore, which passes my test with flying colors. It is a great masterpiece. But next to it is a painting on a less stratospheric level of artistic sophistication. And there, well, I'm not saying something is wrong with it, but I'm saying the question of whether something is wrong with it at least arises. It's not obviously clean. So let's go and see if we can uh, have a look. Gauguin, like Chopin in music, is the most sickly of the great painters. And when things go well, he brings to the modern world the primitive fire of antiquity. But when things slip, you begin to see the subjects in the paintings as less magical and more of this world. And then you see them being limitlessly manipulated by the will of a single individual. And that artifice, especially to us here and now, is bound to prove unlovely. <laughs> 